Well, I'm going to try this. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but we'll give it a shot. This is a, uh, an interactive website that you will be given access to, and I wanted to walk you through it. You can explore on your own, but I wanted to help you understand how to make transformations or how to draw the graphs of the transformations of the typical sine, cosine, tangent functions. And let's see, just to get familiar with this, we can plot the function. Okay, and we all know what the sine of x looks like. 0, 0, so because the sine of 0 is 0. And then we notice that here's pi over 2, and when x is pi over 2, we know the sine is 1. Okay, so after doing the project, you should be very familiar with the sine function. But the question is, you look up here, y equals a, so we can add constants. y equals a sine of b, uh, the b would go there in front of the parentheses, times x minus c, and then plus d. So what I'd like you to do right now is think to yourself, what is, what is, how is the graph going to change if I increase a? So I'm just going to increase the value for a. Right now the value for a is 1. In fact, a and b are both 1, c and d are both 0. So we have the typical graph of the y equals sine of x. So again, what's going to happen to the graph, this graph here, if a is increased? Okay, so think about that. If, if we move a to 2, what is going to change? So I'm going to do that, so I want you to pause the video if you want to think about it a little bit more. And here we go. So, uh, a, I got to get in the right, make sure I'm in the right, oh shoot. Okay. Recording this session here, so I don't know if it's going to work or not. Anyway, so we're going to increase a by 1. So now the value for a is 2. And notice what happened to the sine function. All the x-intercepts are the same. The period remains the same. All it did was it increased the y value. And remember, that 2 on the outside of the function, if you remember how you do the hand signals, we put our, our hands together with our thumbs out, and that's an, and it's an outside change. And so that 2 on the outside means that it's going to move in the y direction. And I'll just show you, I'll slide it back and forth. So if we move to 3, 4, 5, and again, you're going to be able to do all this on your own. 4, 3, 2, 1. Now what's going to happen if we go to 0? Well, y is equal to 0. That's going to be a horizontal line. But negative 1, if we put a negative 1 or negative on the outside, that's going to be still a transformation in the y direction. And as I'm talking, I'm even moving my hands up and down like that. So it's a transformation in the y direction, but the minus sign there means that it's going to be a reflection, and that would be a reflection about the x-axis. So that same graph right there is going to flip. Whatever's above the x-axis is going to then go below, and whatever's below the x-axis is then going to be above. It's not going to change the period at all. So I'm going to go to negative 1, so we can do that. Like those negative 1. So there you go. And then again, as the value of a increases now in the negative direction, we can see that the, it affects the range, okay? So we'll go back to the original sine of x, and the range is from negative 1 to 1, and the domain is all real numbers, but again, the sine of x can't be bigger than 1, can't be less, less, less than negative 1. Okay, so we could do the same thing for the cosine function, same kind of thing, we increase a, and it goes up. We decrease A, and it flips over the x-axis, yet it's still, uh, the range increases. And what we call that is the amplitude, okay? The amplitude of a sine or cosine function would be how high it goes from the middle. Okay, well, what does that mean? Well, basically, it's the absolute value of A. So from right, that, that line that goes cuts right through the middle of the graph, if we go up one unit, then one is the amplitude. How high can the graph go from the middle? And the amplitude is defined to be the absolute value of a. So in other words, if a were equal to negative two, then the amplitude is from zero to two, right there. So the amplitude is two, the absolute value of that number right there. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a couple terms here and we'll and this will help you uh, with the worksheet. Okay, 
And then uh, we can also do the tangent. Now you know what the tangent looks like. The tangent is sine over cosine. So wherever the cosine is equal to zero, we have zero in the denominator and we can't have that. So that's where these vertical asymptotes come from. Okay, and the period of the tangent function again is from negative pi over two to pi over two. And that just means that it's um, pi, pi radians, pi over two minus negative pi over two, the distance there pi radians. Well, how would it look if we increased a here? Well, as you notice, the y values get bigger quicker as we increase a. The graph looks virtually the same. In fact, if you drew the graph like this or like that, either way you're going to get it right. Okay, x-intercepts are all the same, y-intercept is the same. Um, now, let's go back to the sign and let's see what happens when we change the b. So what I want you to be thinking here is, is what's going to happen to the graph of the function if I increase b? So I'm going to, I'm going to make it equal to y equals the sine of 2x. Okay, sine of 2x. So that's a, an inside the parentheses change. So that's an input change. Okay, an input change is going to be left and right. So how's the graph going to change left to right? It's going to stay, uh, the range will stay, remain negative 1 to 1, but um, let's see what happens. So we increase b by, by 1. So now it's the sine of 2x. And you should be thinking to yourself, uh, okay, so it's, it's kind of like an accordion effect. When you increase the b, that means that it's like it, it um, well, it's hard to explain in terms of the period, but it does decrease the period. Okay, so it kind of squishes it together. Okay, so in other words, it doesn't take as long to repeat this function. In other words, to get all the way around the unit circle, it doesn't take as long. It only takes pi, so from 0 to pi, when x is pi, notice that what the sine is taking is the sine of 2 pi. Okay, when x is equal to pi over 2, we have the sine of 2 times pi over 2, which is the sine of pi. The sine of pi is 0. Okay, so if you were just to replace x with these values right down here along the x-axis, you would see y, when x is pi over 4, it already climbs all the way up to 1. It already reaches its highest point, it meaning the sine function. Okay, whereas before, when it was just the sine of x, it took us until we got x is equal to pi over 2 until until the sine reached its peak, okay? And notice that, again, when we increase b, we, um, we see that we're increasing the, um, the, the, decreasing the period. In other words, within the zero to two pi, it repeats itself twice. And then if we increase it to three, between zero and two pi, it repeats itself three times. And then from zero, uh, we'll make b equal to five, and if you were to trace this, you go, okay, one, two, three, four, five, and it takes five, it, it, it'll repeat itself five times as x makes its way from zero to two pi. And so we can see we, we uh, decrease the period and we increase the, or we can say we increase the number of times the graph repeats in that same uh, zero to two pi interval. Okay, again, 0 to 2 pi, one time. Period is 2 pi. Well, guess what? Period here is when we increase b by 1, period is pi. Okay, and so uh, what I will uh, follow up in another video when I'm showing you guys how to uh, draw the graphs of these functions on your own, we will, I'll show you the, the, the formula for, the, for finding the period really quickly. Okay, so the period would be 2 pi, the normal period, divided by the b. Okay, so if you want to write that down, I can't write it down here. I haven't figured out how to do that yet. So then uh, you, we're going to go all the way over here to c. Uh, went a long ways there. So c being 0 right now, meaning that we're not shifting the graph left or right. But if we increase c by, let's just say, I don't know, 1 or 2 or whatever, what is going to happen to the original graph? Well, if we increase c, then we're adding, okay, so it's x minus. So x, as we increase c, remember that uh, it subtracts that number. So in other words, we're 
moving that number of radians to the right. So if you notice the x-intercept, which used to be when, I, when c was equal to 0, you follow the x-intercept right there, or follow the right where the, the graph goes through the origin, and you can follow it as, it, as we increase c, we're moving the graph to the right. So we're shifting the graph, that number of radians, to the right. And the same way we've done this from the very beginning. And if we add, then we're going to be shifting the graph to the left. So no big deal. Same thing with the cosine and the tangent as well, but uh, no big deal. We've done that before. And then the D would be, um, you know, we're adding D. And so if we, D is a positive number, then you should make a kind of guess, make a hypothesis as to what's going to happen to the graph of this function when we increase D. And when we increase D, it's going to move it up. And when we decrease, when D is a negative number, then the graph moves down. Okay. And so I'm just going to run through real quickly the cosine. Just a quick review. The cosine when A increases or decreases, we see it affects the what? Finish that sentence. What does it affect? A is the, or the absolute value of the A right there in front of the cosine is the amplitude. Okay, now B is affecting the period of the function. Okay, as we increase B, we repeat the graph that number of times in that same 2 pi radians. We decrease B, and in fact that, uh, decrease B, what in the world does that do? I didn't do that in the last one. So we're decreasing it, and that's flipping it over. The, what does that do? Interesting. So it looks exactly the same. So when B is negative, it looks exactly the same. What happens if B is negative on the sine? So B is negative on the sine. It does flip it over the y-axis. Okay, so it's inside. It's a shift to the left, or a reflection about the uh, y-axis. The B is negative. Don't worry, you're not going to have to do that B being negative. Um, Going over to cosine, and then the C again. We move to the right as C increases. Move to the left as C decreases, or increases in the negative direction. And then the D goes up and goes down. So you should be familiar with this because we've done this basically all along with all the other functions, all these transformations. And uh, we're just in, we're including that now with the trig functions, and you should see that Graphing trig functions, you use the same techniques as you would when you graph all of the other functions, polynomial, rational, log, and exponential functions that we've graphed so far. So, now that you're an expert, you should be able to fill out the uh, worksheet, do the worksheet problems that, I, um, that I've assigned for you, and we'll see you next class period.